time ago in a little town called Sleepy Hollow, there was a school teacher named Ichabod Crane. Now Ichabod was a tall, skinny man who was quick to use a ruler on naughty scholars. Ichabod didn't live in the town of Sleepy Hollow. To get to his house, he had to ride his skinny old horse through the woods. He had heard stories that there was some kind of a ghost that prowled through the woods. Being a learned man, he put no stock in such tales. One night, Ichabod stayed in town very late at a party. As the evening wore on after lots of food and lots of cider, the folks started telling ghost stories, and they got around to talking about the ghost in the woods outside of town. The story was that the ghost was a rider on a big horse that actually snorted flames and smoke, and the rider, he was a huge man who had no head. Finally, it got to be very late, and it was time to go home. Now, old Ichabod wasn't exactly scared, but then again, he wasn't too keen on riding through those woods this late at night. Well, he got on his skinny old horse and started off for home. As he rode through the woods, the full moon shone with an eerie light, making all kinds of spooky shadows. An owl hooting in the distance didn't make him feel any better, so he urged his old horse to go a little faster. Was it a dog? Maybe a wolf? Suddenly he caught a glimpse of a strange orange light, and it was coming straight toward him. Now Ichabod was terrified. He tried to make his old horse go faster, but the strange orange light was coming closer and closer. Could it be? Yes, it was a rider on a horse. The horse seemed to breathe smoke and flames, and now the schoolmaster could see better. The horseman had no head. The rider's head was carried before him on the saddle, and he was laughing. The craziest laugh you've ever heard. The headless horseman was coming very close to Ichabod now. He could feel the heat from the horse's fiery breath. They raced through the woods. The goblin was laughing. Ichabod was screaming. It was some wild scene as they raced along the little trail that led to a little bridge near the church. Just as they came to the bridge, the headless horseman suddenly stopped. His horse reared up. And what happened next is the scariest part of the story. The goblin rose in his stirrups and threw his head straight at Ichabod. The next day, Ichabod's old horse was found near his master's gate, but the saddle was missing. Later on, down by the old wooden bridge, they found Ichabod's hat, and close beside it, a shattered pumpkin. days of sailing ships, people from all over the world were coming to America, looking for a new start in life. There was this one ship named the White Cloud, and it's her last voyage that this tale is about. She set sail for the new world with a full passenger list. Now, these folks weren't poor like a lot of the early settlers. They brought things of great value like jewels and gold heirlooms. And while they tried to keep these things hidden, on a small ship, the word gets around among the crew. Now, the captain of the White Cloud had been a pirate when he was younger, but was given a pardon by the king because of the shortage of experienced sea captains. When he heard about the treasures on board, his thoughts turned back to the old pirate ways. He plotted with the crew to murder the passengers, take their belongings, 
set fire to the ship and escape in the longboat. On the last night out of port, the murderous crew crept below with knives drawn. They spared no one. Every single passenger was brutally killed. Then a plunder began. Sea bags were slashed open. Trunks were bashed apart. Everything of value was piled on deck and divided among the thieves. After they had loaded the long boat, the captain set fire to the white cloud. And the smaller boat pulled away from the flaming hull. Suddenly the wind shifted. The ship, now a mass of flames, bore down directly on the log. The villains laid to the oars, but it was no use. With a thunderous, fiery crash, the blazing ship split the small boat in half, and the evil crew was dumped, screaming into the fiery sea. And all hands were lost. Since that infernal night. Every year, on the first new moon of the fall, the flaming ship reappears. You can hear the eerie screams of terror from the tormented men as the blazing ghost ship nears the shore. She suddenly bursts into a great fireball, then disappears, only to appear again moments later. This happens three times. After the third explosion, no matter the direction of the wind, the blazing sea gone inferno disappears over the horizon, always to the northeast, not to be seen again for a full year. Folks who have seen this ghost ship swear that they could smell burning canvas, rope, and human flesh. <laughs>